so much beard. I yeah, you made a mistake. <laughs> you should have worn that to go see the dictator. <laughs> the last Sasha Baron Cohen movie. So we were at uh, the Brothers Grimsby. It was us, <laughs> one other guy in there, who eventually showed up. Yeah, at an odd time, like 15 minutes in after like the basically once like the the opening for everything has started and they've actually met. It's like it's like that was the point at which someone walks in and is like all right, whatever. Yeah, I went up to go use the restroom. When I came back, that guy was there. <laughs> Did he just sneak in here or something? <sighs> Man, Matthew warned me about this. <laughs> He didn't warn me. No one warned me. I showed you Matthew's uh, tweet. <laughs> <laughs> right now. <laughs> 35 seconds ago. Inside the window. <laughs> God damn. God damn. I didn't need this movie. Fuck. I'm only doing this to get out of the house. I've had a shitty couple of days. Um, I feel bad because this really didn't seem to help. At least like, I knew what I was getting. It wasn't like, you know what, man? The last couple days could just fuck off right and a half. You know what? We're going to go out. We're going to go see something good. It'll totally take my mind. <laughs> Two for the Brothers Grimsby. No, it was just the movie we hadn't seen yet that's playing in Springfield. I always enjoy it whenever, you know, take the tickets up there. And uh, they laugh. Did they laugh at us? <laughs> yeah, oh, she, she like, did, kind of. She's like, oh, okay, what are you guys seeing? Like, oh. <laughs> brother, brother Grimsby. <laughs> oh, are you? You're, you're the two. No, I, I totally needed to see uh, Sasha Baron Cohen and Mark Strong just hiding out in the cavernous vagina of an elephant. And you know when they wrote that scene, they had to have been like, this is the money maker right here. This, this is what's is... going to put fucking asses in seats. Yeah, this is going to be, <laughs> this movie's equivalent of like Cameron Diaz was spunk in her hair. Just Mark Strong and Sasha Baron Cohen in a vagina in an elephant orgy where not only are they being hit several times by the throbbing Holmes cock of an elephant multiple times even gets him in the ass too but just I haven't seen this much elephant splooge on screen since Freddy got fingered <laughs> <laughs> like there has to be another movie where this happened <laughs> yeah, there is I saw that movie in the theater too <laughs> yeah there's a uh... Buckets upon buckets of just semen. Just so much of it. So much everywhere. It's everywhere. You know, and that's really all we can talk about with this movie. This movie's 80 <laughs> minutes long, thankfully. I mean, I'll give it that. This. This could easily have been one of those, like, dude, we were in there for like two hours and ten minutes. This movie's over and done. This is about the length the million ways to die in the West should have been. <laughs> yeah, but kept going for 70 more minutes. Um, it, what's there to even say about the plot? The plot doesn't even matter. The characters don't matter because... The, the, this movie is basically like the, the, the best thing I can compare it to the entire time was... Uh, it's like if if you took the first Zoolander movie and removed all of the charm and like novelty from it. Oh no! So it's Zoo it's Zoolander two, another spy spoof that also has Penelope Cruz in it with the same haircut. Probably filmed him at the same time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and this was worse than Zoolander two, and Zoolander two is fucking bad, but. <laughs> Zoolander 2 wasn't surrounded by like what's the the little things that are going gonna go on between Elephant Cock and Gabare Sidibe's bush up close and uh the part where the guy's getting his uh 
crotch waxed, but it gets on Sasha Baron Cohen's face. And, and then he has a goatee. Yeah, you see where this is going. Plops right down. And that's the, the joke. The joke is just something gross is it's like that vacation reboot where the joke is just that something gross happens for no reason that's the entirety of this movie is like it's like with with an action movie you know you're supposed to have like an action beat every so many pages it's like with this that's like you have to have a dick joke every so many lines otherwise we won't make quota not even a good it felt like so much filler because the well, cause yeah, like yeah. The, the whole part with like, it's like he g- goes into a room and and sees a bald guy getting waxed because he ended up at the wrong location. He thinks that it's someone torturing Mark Strong. So you know, kerfuffle gets waxed mm-hmm. on his face. Crotch pulls back, goatee like that, mm-hmm. and then that's it. That's the whole joke. Then it cuts to him outside, perfectly fine, walking away from there. It's like okay, mm-hmm. that's just. It seems like this was maybe at one point a script where you have a couple of different kind of movies. You have uh, the Mark Strong spy movie that in any other movie universe it would have been like just purely a Mark Strong spy movie or a Statham movie. And then you have, it turns out, this badass action hero has a really drunken brother where in, like, the mid to late 90s probably would have been played by, like, Ray Siphons. Um, kind of looks not unlike him in this yeah, either. Yeah, honestly. Uh, and so there's even... Even stylistically, they're they're both shot kind of differently. One of them's one of them's shot like a high-tech thriller, and then when it's so, showing Sasha Baron Cohen, it looks like it's... Like you know, like Saving Grace or something, or like this yeah. very small indie, you know, comedy about a, some guys who like to drink and watch sports and give each other shit. Because yeah, I mean, because it's 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 kind of like bipolar whenever these different scenes are going on. Because like like the parts with uh with like the the spy stuff with with Mark Strong, like like it's very kinetic. Like it has mm-hmm. like nicely choreographed fight scenes. It's it's tightly shot. You know, it goes back and forth between like like he's got like a little like like uh, contact lens camera thing, so it keeps switching over to like first person view mm-hmm. for. Uh... It doesn't do this. <laughs> it does magic. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it it switches into like first person view mode for. Just uh... bit. Oh, look at this uh, For parts, like it's very fast, you know, like shaky cam, like, you know, it's, it's, it's an action film. Mm -hmm. And then it cuts over to, you know, his brother and yeah, like it's, it's like, it's like you're watching fucking like dear Frankie. Yeah. Um, (laughs) and that I, I, I could see this setup working a little bit where you have two completely different kinds of movies and they eventually come together because they're, they're long lost brothers and, the Sasha Baron Cohen character has been looking for his brother for all this time, eventually does find him, but there's, there's never really any real connection. There's never any real human moment. No. Yeah. Cause he, he's spent like, what do you say? Like 28 years. Yeah. Trying to find him. And just by divine chance, mm-hmm. like, a guy he knows, like, oh yeah, a friend of mine, like, he, he saw your brother just the other day and stole some, like, passes to this posh event that he's gonna mm-hmm. be at. Like, like, I was waiting for that to be, like, some sort of weird, like, it's like, maybe, like, the bad guys are setting this up so that, like, it's like, no, no, it just happened to just be, like, that some guy who's a mm-hmm. friend of a friend recognized him out of the blue based off a picture from 30 years prior when he was six... This doesn't lead to, shit. Um, this doesn't lead to any kind of uh, real human dramedy or anything like that, or even any kind of human moment in the film. It all it is is just a setup for this gross Sasha Baron Cohen character to have to do raunchy stuff 
with Mark Strong because of his spy shit. Like, you've seen this in the trailers where he gets shot in the dick with a poison dart. There's a lot of that it doesn't show in the trailer. What you see more in this is his throbbing ball sack in which Sasha Baron Cohen has to put his testicles in his mouth and suck out all the poison, but it it even goes beyond that. It, it goes into like, uh, oh, the, I'm not. It's not coming out fast enough. Here, let me stand up. And then they're in like tea bag position. And then when that happened, you leaned over to me and said like, "Well, this is what we're watching for the <laughs> night. It's like <laughs> this is how we spend our evenings." Yeah, <laughs> watching this shit and. I can't tell if Mark Strong is sleepwalking through this or if, if he's just cool. <laughs> like, it's like, yeah, like, <laughs> parts when when it's like a, a, like, when it's just focused on him, like, he plays it like it's any other fucking movie he's mm -hmm. ever been in. Mm -hmm. And he does it well. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's so fucking weird. Well, and even like, like I said, like, the, the, there's like no, like, real, like, human moment to it. It's like, when, after meeting back up with his brother after like thirty some years, like they both just kind of immediately play it off, like, mm -hmm. like, uh, Cohen is just acting like it's like, oh man, I finally found you. Well, let's piss around and do stuff. And Mark Strong is like, yeah, okay, yeah, you're my brother. Well, okay, bye. I gotta go. I got sh mm -hmm. I got shit to do. I need to fuck off. I need to leave. It's like just no one ever like that's the most like like the deepest their like reunion ever really gets. Yeah, um, it's like yep. Now we are two people who have to be in the same movie together. Oh yeah, when Mark Strong is looking at pictures of him when they were kids, he's just kind of like, yeah, I don't want to look at this, and he just kind of leaves. And then at the end, when you think like, all right, now all of this crazy shit is over. Uh, the, the plot's done. Maybe then they could have like a moment or two. No, it, it's just a setup because they have big gaping assholes that you can, it's like you can hear the wind rustling through and then his kids are just tossing Don't. change in it and it sounds like in a chain cup. Oh yeah, the, the reason for the gaping <laughs> assholes is because you can fall so far on this movie either on grass or pure concrete and be fine. Like, when Mark Strong dives off of that... Yeah, like, it... There at the beginning, like, after, like, this assassination attempt goes wrong and everything gets botched, like, he's making, like, a stylish, like, action guy getaway, jumps off, like, a fire escape, like, three stories up. Mm -hmm. But even at that, it ends with him hitting the ground and just, like, face planting and laying there for a second. It's like... That was your plan? Yeah. Your plan was just to throw yourself off a building. Onto pure concrete. And then at the end, when they have to stop this, these fireworks from going off because it contains this poison gas that's going to infect everybody there, um, their plan to stop it, because when it goes off, it has to be contained inside of something. So they decide to both sit their asses on top of the fireworks, which launch off thousand feet in the air yeah they're they're above the stadium and it's like it's the stadium that they built for like the world cup mm -hmm. like it's a pretty big place yeah and and yeah they're they're mostly fine afterwards except for again like the giant gaping assholes yeah, yeah and that's it oh but like donald trump got aids at the end yeah um which that just felt like that didn't even feel like a thing that was originally written into it. Like there were certain like cutaway gags that felt Let's like they see were if this works with the focus. <laughs> like there were certain like cutaway gags in this that just it felt like like they left a blank spot and they're like we'll come up with something and stick it in so there's a timely reference. Because, like, they already had an AIDS joke with Daniel Radcliffe, like, not once, but twice. And then, in case you didn't get it the first time that this kid who's got, who's got AIDS has been shot in the arm, his blood in slow motion flies off, and 
it goes into Daniel Radcliffe's mouth who uh, you can see he's got sores in his mouth and then there's a newscast after that that just explains to us what we just saw like Daniel Radcliffe was oh man that's my train to Chicago tomorrow (laughs) oh shit it's early yeah and like 20 feet away so it's kind of loud and it's headed towards St. Louis well that's (laughs) alright in a lot of these screenings you can hear that freight line the freight one yeah (laughs) Um, it's fine. They don't care. I, think I know exactly. I take the train so much too. I think, I think that might be the Lincoln service. Um, <laughs> so, okay, it explains to us what we just saw. They're like, and he had so many sores in his mouth. Like I know. I just I've yeah, been we, watching. We saw this. the camera like, went into his mouth. And then it happens again to Trump, which, I mean, look, far be it for me to. <laughs> we've, made Trump jokes on here plenty of time. I did in a video last week. But this was just kind of like, oh, Donald Trump's he's an unlikable, detestable guy, so let's give him AIDS. Like, there wasn't really anything... Like you do. Yeah, there wasn't really anything smart. It wasn't like, you know, Donald Trump gave... Maybe he did, I don't know, but, like, gave some speech that said, like, I don't think HIV is a thing. Or, you know, the joke would still be dumb regardless, but at least... But, yeah, at least it would have a, a, a topical reference point. Uh-huh. But yeah, it, it, what made it weird, and this is why I, I was curious if, like, they just left it blank to figure it out later, because with, uh, with like, you know, Daniel Radcliffe in this getting AIDS, it's like a, a, a look-alike, it's... You know, it's not that him. took me a second. It, it, it did. Like, it, it, was, it was convincing enough. Yeah, it, it kind of was. It was like, like, like that. I mean, it could be. I mean, I, I, like, I've seen him do cameos and, and yeah. weird things. So like quick flashes like that. Like, OK, you know what? Like, I'm, I'm with you on that. But then like whenever they're going towards like the the this like soccer final. They mention that, like, just like in passing, like on like the fake news, like just put up like a still shot. It's like, oh, and Donald Trump's here. It's like, okay. And then later during a scene, it, you know, where Daniel Radcliffe gets shot and then the blood goes and, you know, gets on Trump, it's a like clearly, like, very terribly, like, CG'd, like, you know, like face put onto just some nondescript body. Yeah, it looked because it looked like it was completely flat. It looked like basically if you printed out like a picture. The game of death. Uh the Bruce Lee. Yeah, exactly. That's that is totally what it looked like. Uh and and yeah, so that's what I I I figure like it's like maybe it was I I don't know, like did did Matthew say anything? Like, was it somebody different over there? No. Uh, in fact, I brought that up to him because that that was kind of in the news before it came here because studios were debating on whether or not leaving that in the movie. But I knew it was out there, so I asked him. I was like, yeah, over here they're saying something about maybe possibly cutting that out. And he said, like, yeah, that would be probably... He goes, it'll probably still be in there. That would be hard to take that out because the joke's bad, but that's a joke they're banking on for the end of the movie. Yeah, I, I just wondered if maybe, like, like in the overseas market, like, over in, like, the UK, like, oh, it's, like, like the former Prime Minister Tony Blair getting, you know, AIDS or something like oh. that. Like, like if it was <laughs> no, just, it like, was always Trump. But, yeah, it just, it seems so weird, like, like you couldn't get a look-alike. Mm-hmm. Like, you got a look-alike for, for fucking Harry Potter, but you can't get a look-alike for, for Trump. Like, get, uh... like it just... It seemed weird. Daryl Hammond in there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can't watch a a new satire program without a Trump impersonator popping up somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So it, it just it seemed weird that like oh but it, yeah we'll just like really bad like Photoshop in some like still frames to make it look like he's a real person like it just it was so fucking weird mm-hmm. is like like that's why i just wondered like maybe if they they like came up with who it was going to be after the movie was made because uh, uh, same way like because nobody ever actually says anything about it other than like people doing like voiceover stuff mm-hmm. 
Uh, or the same with like that uh, that Bill Cosby joke. I could see that coming a mile away. Like that that was like complete cutaway. You never see any of that, other than just like whenever it like cuts to that wall and like mm-hmm. shows like a like it, it's some like throwaway gag. Like like uh, at the beginning of the scene, I was like. I know where they're going with it. it. It's showing Mark Strong's old room when he was a kid, and he's like, I've left everything the same. He's got a lot of people on the wall who don't like women as much as they supposedly did in the in the 80s and in the day, and it's like, it was like George Michael and Elton John. Freddie and Mercury. Freddie Mercury. And then he, I, and for a passing thought, I was like, I was like, oh, I, I figured this was probably going to, have like a Cosby joke. Sure enough, a second later, and then some of them liked women a little too much. Picture of Bill Cosby. But yeah, like it just it seemed like such like a random like because the way they frame the shot, you never really get a look inside that room. Mm-hmm. Like you see him standing in the doorway, and you can see there's stuff behind him. Like there's a bunk bed and like like stuff on the walls. But like any of the stuff that they show you in like the the sight gags. You can't make out any of that, so it's like, like again, like it was like, okay, well, did they they do this, and then they just figured like it's like ah oh, no fuck it. In like six months, when we get ready to put this thing out, <laughs> someone will be in the news for a sex scandal, and we'll just put up that person's picture. Like that's Such... what it felt like. It felt like because like I, I know that like I, I've I've bitched about this before with different projects and stuff that the problem with putting in timely references is that by the time you have the finished product it's not a timely reference anymore yeah i was like when you like like there was some movie we saw like a few months ago and it threw in like a george bush joke or like a sarah palin joke or something like that like it's like what the fuck did you dig that up at Uh, that's right i i mainly in my head when i think of something like that i may mainly go towards like Whenever Friedberg and Seltzer did that all the time in the parody movies, and actually beyond them, uh, Marlon Wayans did that a lot in Fifty Shades of Black. But like Friedberg and Se- it'd be like they'd be spoofing Twilight, and then all of a sudden the cast of the Jersey Shore is there. Like, but that is for nobody. Like, yeah, th- that's just you running out of things. Or like maybe like five years ago when you wrote that part of the script and like finally like like oh yeah here we can get a treatment for this just put in like some i don't know like what's a thing people are watching now that's something you do on a television series that's known for being topical not in a movie that's supposed to stand the test of time well and, and like i say e- even past that like like okay like there, there's plenty of stuff that's out there like there there's there's a shitload of like you know, what were probably at the time topical references and stuff like fucking airplane you know, but when it's coming out in the day and age that it's supposed to be in, like you, those have to still be things that are happening, but mm-hmm. like pop culture moves at such a faster pace now. Like, it's like, you know, it, it could have been something that like, yeah, the day that they, like the day that a thing became a thing, like they could have wrote that into the script, but yeah, six months later when they're done filming it and another three months later, once it's actually out in theaters, like, the collective like public consciousness has moved on. Yeah. So like that that's why I felt like maybe like those jokes there, like the, the Bill Cosby thing and like the Trump thing, like that just felt like like they were filming and then just put like a like like missing real slate in there. It's like, we'll fix that later. Like just cut that out. Like who's in the news? Fuck me, Bill Cosby. All right. <laughs> Picture of the cause in there. <laughs> I think Fifty Shades of Black had a um. If, oh, yeah. That also had a. Uh, uh, um. Okay, that one also had a, a Bill Cosby joke in it. But I actually do remember, and damn, I mean, it, it's something that doesn't happen very often. But I, I, I guess it goes along with like maybe it, it's just that this happened in a much better product and maybe with some better delivery. Because like in Deadpool, he makes a Jared Fogle reference. Um, when he's he's frequently referring to that one dude as a child molester and at one point he makes a subway reference that's extremely topical and but it was but like, it was it was also part of a string of jokes 
in which he is making fun of a character for a certain reason. So at that point, he mentioned Jared Fogel. Well, and with that, like, you know, like even at that, like, like it's still a little bit ago, but it's still like, like current enough. Well, but so it, yeah. is Donald Trump. But, well, but, but yeah, it's this, it's the sort of thing. Like, like it's a lot more seamless in something where you have like a character who's wearing a mask, and also a character that breaks the fourth wall. So yeah, like you you can you can have references like they could have they could have like fucking done like an ADR session like the fucking week before they sent the prints out mm-hmm. and put that in there. It's like they could have done anything up to the point but like this here like with it actually being like a visual gag like I say like it just it felt weird. It's so weird too that <laughs> we're talking about all of this and it's from the director of the Incredible Hulk uh, the first two Transporter movies. Uh, what else? I mean, he's done he's uh, done some good, some bad, but all like now kind you of a, see me. Uh, yeah, he did the first one, uh, which I didn't see the 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 second one on this thing. So I guess someone else is doing it. The second uh, one hasn't come out yet. Well, uh, well, I mean, like it's not, it wasn't even listed as like a like oh a, oh like a, oh like a project. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, the. I mean, he's done some movies that were better than others, but they were at least, like, had kind of maybe a consistency to him, where it's like, okay, I can see that that is directed by this. I wouldn't have thought, like, oh, this elephant bukkake I'm watching right now is clearly from the person who brought us Incredible Hulk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like, it keeps having scenes where it feels like you're watching The Transporter, and then mm-hmm. it feels like you're watching a scene from fucking, like, Ace Ventura 2. I, yeah. <laughs> I wonder if at some point Statham was approached about this movie. I it, it wouldn't surprise me, especially considering the fact that I mean the guy has worked with him before. Yeah, yeah, on on the first two Transporter movies, but maybe it was just like Statham saw this project and where he could spoof his image in that, or spoof his image in Spy. Which has done a lot fucking better than this. <laughs> and yeah, you, you don't want to, you don't want to take on basically two almost identical projects. I mean, it's like yeah, like like Mark Strong, like like yeah, he he was what last year uh, he was in uh, Kingsman. Yeah, but. I feel like this is enough of like a shift in tone that it's not exactly By like far. it's not exactly like doing like like the same exact stint back to back. That movie was that movie was a solid plot with really well done and likable characters, good action scenes, good performances, and certainly very R rated that had some raunchy stuff in yeah, it. Yeah, that 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 is how you do what they were wanting to do with this cuz I mean even to, like to a certain degree that's almost the same sort of thing because, like the main character in Kingsman, uh, Eggsy, mm-hmm. he's a fucking just fucking hooligan. Like he's yeah. just has no concept of what's going on here, but for some reason latches onto it really well and becomes really good at it by the end. Like it's a very similar sort of but proposal. This, this was just raunchy. That's yeah. it. They just wanted to be raunchy with it. Um, and make it so sh- and make the plot so thin, so short, and just with with all these gross out moments that by the time the movie started and ended, I, I felt like I got nothing out of this. Like, well, yeah, well, especially like like they set up like like oh, there's some like big like global crime syndicate mm-hmm. out there, like you know, on par with shit like, like Spectre or something like that. There's, you know, it's being run by some like shadowy figure who turns out to be Penelope Cruz of all people with almost completely ridiculous motivation. Like, he's just like, it's like who should be the bad guy? Like, ah, oh, what if it, what if it's her? What if it's not Ian McShane? <laughs> he's in this. And the, the weirdest fucking thing to me is that at the end of the day, this has a lot of really good actors in it. Oh, completely waste Scott Adkins. Yeah, Ed Glazer did, did amazing for uh-huh. the parts he was in. I was glad he was in it more than I thought he was going to be because they kill him in the trailer. Yeah, so it was like we went into this like, it's like, well, he has a finite time span on him. Like, he's going to die. But uh, he's actually 
for a while is the main guy that they're chasing in this because he was the assassin who Mark Strong was trying to stop before Sasha, Sasha Baron Cohen fucked it up. So they're kind of trying to find out who he is through a lot of the movie and they have a, a decent enough throw down at one point between Mark Strong and, or between, uh, um, Scott Atkins and a couple of characters, but you know how this ends. They put it in the trailer. Like, yeah. like fucking it's like, as soon as that fight started, it's like, Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just fucking wasted Scott Adkins in this movie. Fuck. Like at least he was in a fair amount of that Hercules movie and was easily <laughs> the best part of it. Hell yes. <laughs> um, Maybe they were right to put that in the trailer for people who'd be like, I want to go to the big screen and see something with Scott Adkins. Oh, wait, he died? No, I'm going to stay home. <laughs> Just watch Man. Ninja. <laughs> or uh, one of the Universal Soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, I fucking like Scott Adkins. I, I love I, Scott I, Adkins. I really wish he would would be in some more stuff. Me too. Whenever he is, though, he's usually the best part. Um, or one of the best parts, at least. Uh, I got, look, no one went to go see this movie. This is like when, <laughs> this is like when we went to go see Gem and the Holograms. What do we say at the end? It's not like, like, here's what we should think about you going to see it. What's it matter? No one's fucking going to see this. It debuted at yeah. like number fucking eight or some shit. No one has any interest in seeing this. It's not like. Like, um, I don't know. Let me just see what these guys say about it first. Yeah, if you had any interest in seeing it, you probably already saw it. And if you haven't, there's no point to it. If you're a big Sasha Baron Cohen fan, who I could could kind of take or leave, he's, I, I've seen some, some of his stuff that's been fine. Um, but, but even at that, like, th this is definitely, like, among his weakest material, it's like by far, like I, I'd, <laughs> I'd rather like like rewatch something like like Borat or or even like like the fucking Ali G show or something. I'd like, rather watch the Dictator than this. But yeah, this was just, I don't know. Like I, I know he likes trying different things and doing weird shit. Like I, I get that, and I, I, I can respect the process of that. But at the same time, it's like. Sometimes there's just stuff that's not for you. Like yeah, you know, this was this was his love guru. Like yeah, like sometimes you you end up with like it's like ah oh, man, like I'm gonna try making a western, and then fuck, <laughs> then you end up with like like that fucking yeah. uh, ridiculous six or something. It, like it's that. like just being that Freddie Mercury movie, man. I don't think that'll ever happen, but part you were born to play dude yeah, right um like fucking seriously like if you're a big enough sasha baron cohen fan give this maybe five minutes on netflix if you're not digging it after that it's not going to get better but yeah th this is not a a ticket price no movie <laughs> not even at 80 minutes long god damn <laughs> even at that like <laughs> Unless you saw it at, like, a fucking, like, second run or something like that, like, I, I, even, even, like, a good movie that's 80 minutes, I still feel like I'm getting kind of slighted, because it's, like, like, it's 10 bucks for, like, like, fucking, you know, like, if you went to see, like, like, 2012, which was, like, three hours ah. long, but it's the same 10 bucks if you go see a movie like Haunted House, which was 70 minutes. Kurt Cameron saving Christmas. <laughs> yeah, it's, like, like, it's the same cost. Like, I feel mm. slighted if a movie is too short, but, again, like, I, I mean, I'm not complaining. I'm, I, the, this one would have way fucking overstayed its welcome if it was, a, like, a minute longer. <laughs> As is, it was, it was already hard enough to fucking sit there, like, because this... This felt a lot longer than some actually longer movies we've seen. Uh, like it, a couple of the bad ones that I just recently went to go see, they seemed a little longer than this, but I, I, I know what you mean. But I think uh, it's because I spent like half the time like like not so much enjoying the movie as just sitting there just sighing with discontent at the screen. Like, of course. Of course they're like helping masturbate an elephant. <laughs> Just sighing, shaking our head. Uh, I know that in terms of stuff coming up, uh, I, I'm going to Chicago tomorrow 
uh, for C2E2 over the weekend. Um, and I'm looking forward to getting out of town, honestly. <laughs> um, but, uh, um, so I won't be able to see anything tomorrow night, but I know what comes out is like Allegiant and Miracles from Heaven. Uh, so... Fuck is that? That's that Jennifer Garner, Heaven is for Real type. Oh, the movie. one about like... It's like you're telling me my daughter fell out of a tree and it cured her leukemia or whatever the fuck it was. Yep. <laughs> then I need another doctor. <laughs> um, so that's coming up and Sarah and I will be at Sarah and I will be at Allegiant. It's like the third or fourth one of those. It's the third. The last one just came out last year. I feel like I've se I feel like I've seen all those movies in the span of not much of not a long period of time. Yeah, like it's it's I mean, it's nice when a series can, like, put out, like, back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back installments sometimes. Yeah. But at the same time, like, it feels like there's, like, been one of those movies consistently in theater. Uh-huh. Like, it comes out, and then it then it hits, like, DVD. And as soon as it hits DVD, then the next one is out yeah. in the theater. Like, like it has oh, consistently yeah. been, like, you know... On something, in something, like brand new, like that is gonna be so in, in just in one year, <laughs> just like Insurgent was. But I'm sure Dave and I will be at Miracles from Heaven. <laughs> so I'll see you then. <laughs>